All right, welcome uh, those of you that have logged in. Um, we're going to get started in just a couple of minutes, uh, but uh, just wanted to give you a, a two minute warning. Uh, this session will be recorded and you'll have a chance to come back and watch it later if you'd like. And uh, I'll see you in just a couple of minutes. Thank you. So again, we've got a few people trickling in. Uh, we'll get started here in just about a minute. Um, and uh, thank you for attending our July 3D Experience User Group meeting. We will get rolling here shortly. Well, that certainly seemed like a fast two minutes, but uh, I do have top of the hour, at least on my or clock here. Um, uh, again, thank you for uh, those that have logged in. And uh, if others are joining, that's certainly fine. We'll get started here in just a second. Um, wanted to do a quick introduction. Again, this is the July 3D Experience User Group meeting. Uh, we at CATI are hosting the meeting. Uh, my name is Brian Reel, and I will be the, uh, the background voice. And we have two presenters today. Our first presenter is going to be Steve Fick. Uh, from the SolidWorks uh, team, and I'll let Steve go into more detail on his role and, and so forth here in just a second. And then we have our own uh, Don Glasky uh, from CATI who's going to do our second presentation. And uh, we will have a chance, each presentation is about 15 or so minutes long, um, and we'll have a chance for questions to be asked uh, or typed into. Uh, there should be a question box that you should have access to uh, in the, uh, the user panel. Uh, so feel free to do that, and we will address those questions as they come in or, or when there's an opening in the uh, presentation itself. Uh, so Steve, I think you are presenting your screen. Looks like we can see your webcam as well. Uh, so feel free to say a quick intro and we'll get rolling. Perfect. Thanks, uh, thanks Brian and the CATI team for having me, and uh, thank you guys for joining today. As Brian said, my name's Steve Fick. I'm an industry process consultant with uh, SolidWorks, and today I'm going to just walk you through uh, 10 or so tips or tricks for data management and collaboration. So it'll be kind of a little bit of just one of those good old-fashioned rapid-fire you know, just showing you some some things that hopefully you'll walk away feeling like you, uh, you've you got a new trick or tip that you can try um, as it relates to interacting with the platform. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll turn off my webcam uh, so we can focus on SolidWorks and the platform. And one of the first things I wanna highlight for you is, is a, uh, a way that we introduce to better collaborate with external um, users. So, you know, oftentimes, uh, you know, obviously we're all on the, on the platform, but we might be dealing with um, a customer that is not, and we want them to be able to do design work, or we want to be able to have their input on something. Um, and so one of the things that we introduced, I think it was two FDs ago, was you can now come into the tools uh, tab, and then right here, you can choose to export as a package. And what's cool about this is it'll take whatever you have open in session and it'll allow you to basically selectively choose what that non-platform user should, should be able to do, right? So I can come in and say, well, the, uh, the mixing tube, maybe I want them to be able to edit that and I want them to be able to edit the 
top level assembly, uh, but everything else needs to stay read only. And so once I, you know, set what I've got, and by the way, this will collect drawings as well, if there's, if there's drawings. And then down here at the bottom, I've got two options. I can set whether I want to export it to a 3D drive location. So if you've got a large assembly, you just want to share it via 3D drive, you can do that. Or you can do um, a, a folder on your disk. So here I'm just going to, I've got a location and we'll give it a package name. Let's just say it's uh, nozzle. And then I go ahead and hit export and it packages everything up and it puts it in that location. Now for the person that you're collaborating with, uh, they simply need to go out to the free downloads section of SolidWorks and download what's called the 3D Experience Exchange for SolidWorks. So they're gonna download this, it's gonna show up as an add-in inside of SolidWorks. And from their perspective, basically what they'll do is they've got, they'll have a, a new tab once they load the add-in and they can choose to import that package. So they're just going to come down, browse to, you know, that that item that we exported, hit open, and then hit import. And from their perspective, now they're going to have access to exactly what you gave them. And you'll notice that it's going to manage the status. So the two things that I gave them read access or uh, read write access to will say unchanged. And if they make changes to it, it's going to update it. And so they can. They can do that work, they can modify um, whatever it is you're gonna need them to do, and then resend the package back to you. And when you get it, you can then, um, let me just go ahead and close this. When you get it, you have the ability then under the tools, you'll notice to re-import the package. So it becomes this, this nice way of, of really being able to take what you're doing on the platform and be able to still engage with other people who may not have it so that's tip number one be sure to check that out like i said that that came out um, just a couple fds ago and we've continued to enhance it um this last fd i think we gave was the when we added the ability to do the 3d drive um so we're, we're continuing to improve that all right so that's that's the first tip second tip uh is just a quick one Bookmarks, they're a great way to organize your data. And you may find this is kind of a, uh, there's kind of two tips here that I'm gonna highlight for you. The first one is if you've saved your data to the platform and you're like, ah, oh, shoot, I forgot to put it in a bookmark. It's okay, you can actually just simply say, save with options again, and it will give you the chance to select a bookmark. So, you know, you can then come in here and say, okay, I wanna now select the bookmark that I wanna put it in. You can also go out to the platform and just simply drag it into the bookmark as well. Um, but the other thing I wanna highlight for you is that not a lot of people realize that you can just selectively choose what you wanna add to the bookmark. So if I highlight the top level assembly and then say select bookmark, what you'll notice is that there is um, this option right here, maybe you've seen this, that says apply to selected. And, and what that's gonna do is it's only gonna apply the bookmark that you select to the item that you've selected here. All right, so then I can go ahead and hit save and it's gonna add this assembly to my, um, to my bookmark. So why, why would you wanna selectively choose? Well. This kind of leads into another tip, and that is when you're viewing your bookmarks, let me just go ahead and refresh this so it shows up. Um, when you're viewing your bookmarks, what I kind of like about how this handles it is you can expand what you've saved, right? So you've got almost the top level assembly kind of acts like a, um, almost like a folder in some ways. So you can actually expand the items that are listed there. And this is, this is actually on by default now for the bookmark editor, but if for some reason yours doesn't work that way, you just need to go up to your preferences and you need to just check this enable expansion of products. If, if you like working in this, this manner, you may, you may like having just everything in the bookmark, but I personally like having it just so I can save the top level assembly and then basically use that as a way of expanding what's underneath of it when I'm in the bookmark, okay? 
Okay. Uh, the other thing I'll point out to you, some of these are just going to be little nuances that you, you may know, you may not, but, um, and that is pretty much everything in the platform can be dragged and dropped somewhere else. So what I mean by that is, is I can, I can take this assembly and if I want to explore it more, I can drag it up to my structures tab where I have product structure explorer, and then just drag in, uh, drop it into that app. All right, so this gives a, a quick way. Let me uh, get rid of this. So this gives a quick way that you can transition from you know, maybe you've got your bookmark editor on one tab and you just want to be able to drag and drop to another tab and kind of keep your um, your bookmark or your I'm sorry your dashboard tab nice and nice and clean. Now, Product Structure Explorer is a really powerful app from the standpoint of just being able to dig in and understand the structure of the design. And I'll show you a couple tips that you can do here. Um, one of the things that I like to do is you can see I've got a number of things in a different, you know, varying maturity states. I can come up to 6W tags and for maturity state, if I select this, you'll notice that there's a, uh, these options right here. Some people don't realize that this actually expands and you can do things like colorize the uh, the assembly and the structure. So if I want to be able to, to look at this, and I, I usually do tree expansion as my option because it digs down in. And so now what it's done is it gives me a way of colorizing, you know, what's in work, what's frozen and what's released. So I can I can visually see on the design what that looks like. Another thing I like to do with 6W tags while I'm here is let's turn off the, um, the color wheel. And um, another thing, a way of looking at the data is you can come down here and hit these three buttons and you can say that you want to group the items. So, you know, obviously in CAD, we group things certain way, but, you know, sometimes when we're exploring the structure, it's helpful to be able to group and I might want to choose a custom property. Like, so on, on this design, I've got a make or buy custom property that, um, you know, is just a basically a text field that says make or buy. But what group does is I can select that tag, hit group, and now it structures each of those items into um, their, their buckets. So I can see all the items that are uh, make parts. I can see all the ones that are buy parts. Um, just by expanding them. I can also, in this case, it's kind of helpful because I can see items that don't have either. So you met, you know, you can tell, well, this part, we haven't made a decision about whether we're going to make or buy it, or I've just simply forgot to fill out that piece of information. It basically groups it into an other section. So here's another tip uh, for you is, you know, if I want to edit the properties of this, obviously I can, you know, right click on it and choose edit properties. But here's the thing, you can, you can actually take this property dialog and you can, uh, you can pin it to the dashboard. So I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and pin it. And once it's pinned, it's, it's like any other widget, you can kind of rearrange it. So it might be more helpful to, to have it down here. And the nice thing about this is that it now becomes dynamic based upon what I select up here. So, you know, I've, I've selected that mixing tube so I can scroll down here. This is another quick tip is if you just simply double click in this dialog, it automatically puts you into edit mode. So not that it's a, a big deal to have to hit that button, but double clicking will just quickly get you into uh, into that mode. And, you know, we can come in and fill out the fact that we're going to, um, you know, we're going to make this. Right. So it's just a, an easy way to, to get get into that edit mode. And like I said, having this pin down here is kind of nice because as you select on different items, you know, it, it's automatically updating the the property view. And it becomes nice because I can see who I've shared it with. I can see any change actions on it. I can, you know, I can quickly make a comment regarding, you know, maybe I want to tag Brian and say, hey, can you, can you look into this further for me? So 
handy to just have that uh, pinned to your uh, to your dashboard. And you can minimize it, right? So you may not want it up all the time, so it's just nice to minimize it and get it out of the way. Now, here's a here's another uh, trick. A lot of people don't realize that the navigation or the the preview, so 3D Navigate, 3D Play, 3D Markup, and, and I <laughs> I know we have a lot of different ways of previewing, but uh, they're actually all tied together in the sense that if for some reason I decide, you know what, I want to I want to mark this up. I can just come over to the uh, compass. Let's look for a markup, and I'm going to launch 3D Markup. And what you'll notice is that it just automatically transitions this same uh, widget from 3D Navigate to 3D Markup. Right, so I don't have to, you know, drag another widget out or or fire it up on its own. It just simply transitions what's there to the previewer that I I want to work with. So let's uh, let's do a quick markup here, and maybe I'm gonna say that you know um, I want I want to have somebody take a closer look at this this slot right here, right? So we're not going to get too complicated, but that's that's what I want to have happen. Uh, I want somebody to take a look at this um, this slot. So here's the thing that becomes kind of uh, handy is I mentioned earlier that you know everything can be dragged and dropped. I also like having a small column of my collaborative tasks. For the sake of this presentation, I I've got one set up a, a, a task already set up. And what's cool about this is I can say, well, I'm going to drag and drop the markup and I'm going to take just this component and I'm going to drag and drop it on the task as well. Um, and then inside the task, I'm just going to go in and in this case, I'll just assign it. You know, I can assign it to myself. But, you know, at this point, I could I could key that off to, to Brian or, or someone else in my organization. Let's save. And just to kind of come full circle now, what's cool about this is that inside of SolidWorks, you may realize this already, but you can access your tasks. Right, so I'm going to choose collaborative tasks. And when I when I view my tasks, let's right, so I'm going to click review slot. Those items that I dragged and dropped are right there. So you can imagine if I'd sent this to Brian, Brian doesn't have to go search for the for the component. He literally can just drag and drop it right into the graphics view. But here's the here's the neat thing about having the markup attached is you'll notice this drop down gives me the ability to preview the markup. So I can hit preview now, and my 3D markup that I just made now will preview inside of uh, inside of SolidWorks. And this gives me a chance to, you know, see exactly what somebody was intending or or what have you. And of course, it doesn't want to load at the moment. <laughs> but that's the that's the idea is like having that markup right there, I can just go ahead and hit preview. I'll try it one more time just to see if it loads this time. Um, and so I can see exactly what somebody wanted me to to take a look at. And yeah, it's not going to work. But uh, you can try it on on your own. Um, so the final thing I'll point out, and I think I'm doing pretty good here on time, is another new enhancement that I I really like for it actually came out in FDO two was anything in the platform now for the most part you can right click on it and choose copy link. And what this does is it, re it it realizes what you've selected. So if you've selected a physical product like we have here, or if you select an issue, or you select a um, change action, it copies the link and then will launch it. You know, you can send that link to somebody and it'll launch it in that app. So if you copy the link to a physical product and you do it from Bookmark Editor, it'll launch bookmark editor. If you do it from, um, excuse me, 
I had to sneeze there. If you do it from uh, Product Structure Explorer um, and you launch the, the link, it'll launch the physical product inside of uh, Product Structure Explorer for the person who clicks on the link. So, you know, this is a workflow that I'm very familiar with because I think a lot of us do this with, you know, Microsoft Office documents or we do it with, um, Google Docs or whatever it might be, where it's like, you know, we're in a web meeting or just like, of course, somebody could go search for it. Of course, they could go find it. But what's nice is you can say, well, I'll just here, let me just send you the link. They click on it and it launches right into the um, to the app that the, the link was copied from. So I that's a that's a quick tip that um, hopefully you find helpful for, you know, just being able to connect with your colleagues and, and make sure you're both looking at the same content. And it and it's nice too because it's going to obviously grab the revision. So if you do it on revision B and you've got multiple, you know, a revision A, you're you know you're helping to guarantee that they're getting the right revision as you start to talk and collaborate with them. All right, so I think that was uh, that's what I had. Hopefully, some of these tips and tricks were helpful when it help you know when it comes to managing, organizing, collaborating with others. Uh, around the the data that you have on the platform um, and yeah if you have questions I'm happy to help answer them um, otherwise uh, Brian I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it back to you yeah thanks Steve that was great I didn't know about the uh, the copy link option that's uh, that's pretty handy um, yeah. I don't see any questions that have popped up yet um, no chat requests or anything like that uh, but uh, as Steve mentioned, if, if it uh, something that just came to your mind or you're you're typing it in as I'm talking right now, that's certainly fine too. Uh, I'll watch for those to uh, to pop up and then uh, we can address them maybe at the end of the presentation. Um, let's see, I'm going to make Don our presenter next. So thanks again, Steve, for going through those tips with us. Yeah, happy to do it. All right, Don, I believe I have made you the presenter and we now see your screen. So uh, I'll let you go into a little more introduction about yourself, but uh, Don Glasky uh, does work uh, with us here at CATI and um, he's going to go through uh, some aspects of 3D Lean, uh, Lean Team Player, I think. So I'll let you, uh, let you go from there. All right, thanks, Brian. Um, so what I'm gonna go through today is we're gonna talk about 3D Lean Player and then since we got a little more time too, I'll expand on some of the other items that you uh, that go along with uh, that play well and, and work well with Lean. There are many of them, but just on a on a management issue for for everyone to do. Um, so what 3D Lean really is is it helps you in the overall aspect, allows you to monitor um, in one space, capture and digitize essentially everything that you want for some collaboration of of some sort could be a meeting, it could be a project, it could be shift change, it could be any number of things. I use it internally here just with myself, um, managing my own uh, consulting projects and things like that, which I'll show you what that looks like. But it brings everything, the team together all in one space. And a lot of times what ends up happening, and what I'm gonna do is switch, instead of this boring PowerPoint, what I'm going to do here, is we're going to actually switch out of this and i'm actually going to use instead of a powerpoint we're going to do 3d lean and we're going to do it through come on go over here we're going to do it through actually 3d lean so we're going to do my so i'm going to go ahead and do my present through this Okay, so I'm actually, so I'm actually in 3D Lean right now, um, and I'm going to do my presentation through there. Okay, so communication, right? We've had everything, right? All kinds of different things. I went with a little 80s nostalgia there. I don't know who had the Garfield clock. Um, I remember it, so someone must have had it that I knew. I don't know if I ever had one, or that clear one there. That's kind of funny. Then we had fax, and of course, then email came along, and a bunch of other things. The trouble with all of that is, you know, we keep progressing, which is great, um, but there was really nowhere where to collaborate, right? Email was kind of a collaboration, but not really, right? So we get a little further in, and 
we're all disconnected, right? Where we don't really have any structure. You know, there's always, it seems like there's not enough data, but then at the end of the day, when you find everything that you do have in all these different areas, it's almost too much data and you don't know what's what, right? Um, because what happens is every day with me as well, I get people sending me stuff in Outlook and Teams and the SharePoint and OneDrive, okay? Those are all great tools. Don't 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 say that's not a great tool, but um, I have multiple probably of the same documents I know in each location. So um, there's one way to you know to manage it, you know. So it just becomes confusing, and everyone's like, "What is going on? Um, oh, I didn't get that. Oh, I sent it to you in Teams. Oh, it's in SharePoint." So this is where I deal with too. Someone will send me an attachment in 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 Outlook, and then they'll, "Oh, hey, I put it in Teams the next day." You know, so. This is what allows us to collaborate all in one area. Um, and then we're using, everybody's looking at the same data. Um, there's easy, everyone has access to this and you can, and you can do this with, with uh, 3D Lean. So there's what we call Lean Team Player and everyone is essentially is a member, can be a Lean Team Player. What that means is when you're in Team Player, you're able to add information, um, you're able to, access any of the things that you need right um but there is a like a where you, someone can authorize everything that kind of oversees the meeting creates the meetings does things like that but everyone is a, is a team player in here and they all, they're allowed to do that so um again this could be all kinds of things tasks general tasks um which you'll see some of mine here in a little bit uh what mine are just simple things just to make sure everyone's on the same page we can assign Resources, we know when it's been done because things get updated, people go in and change it. Everyone is aware of what's going on. Okay. So the next thing with that is um, a member, and this is where like a player a member allows you to do animate meetings. You can use easy communication, of course. But, but what it really is is organize all of your stuff. It's all there. I'll show you what it looks like, how we can track it, how we can. Um, organize it, the different functionalities that we can do to do it. If you guys want to check more out on these and what these are, I put these little links down here in our, into our, for our website, which just has more inform, not more information, but there may be more links and things like that related to it and some more pictures and stuff for you guys to check out. Okay. So, and then Lean Master is the one that, you know, essentially can create the, the meetings, do all the information that they, that they want to put in there. But all everyone can add to it and do different things that are that are there, okay. And when I get a little further here, I'm not done. Don't worry. Um, I'm done with my PowerPoint, okay. So when we get into Team Player, um, what it is is you need a minimum of IFW um, to do that uh, to get into the into the role. So IFW, you know, has um, like 3D dashboard, 3D swim. 3D Play Web, 3D Drive, um, 3D Search Messaging, things like that. So um, CSV is not required for, um, which is the collaborative. Um, um, the, the IFW is collaborative business innovator, and the other one is the, the CSV is the industry innovator, which allows you for data management and things like that. We'll talk a little bit more about that. But IFW allows you to to get into this, and we have 3D Lean, so. How to create one is just as simple as you think it is. You just essentially need to um, go ahead and create. We would we could go ahead and create. Um, yeah, I'll do it right here. We can go ahead and create something, and then from there we can just drop and drag it on. Okay, so let me go with you here. So I have this one where I have my consulting stuff that I do for Cam. Um, these are the things I'm working on today related to the Cam, um, and then. If I don't get it done, I can move this to tomorrow or I can move this to done. If we have people, we can invite more people. Um, I just have myself in this one, but we can go in and invite more people to this. We also can go ahead and do meetings. A lot of times when you see um, the, uh, when as far as if it's resellers and things like that, when we do meetings, we do a lot of this where we're actually doing the meeting inside here. Um, we can record it. And, and, and do what you're doing. But from here, I can drag these, I can create one. So if I, I someone calls me and tells me I have something that new to do, uh, I'll drag this down here. I can go into tools, I can create a note. 
I'll do a, I'll do a white note this time. Um, remember, you know, remember. If you had a stylus, you could do that. You can. If you had a touch screen, to call customer X Y Z. My end of today. Okay, and then I go ahead and create that action. <clears throat> this is going to put it in here because I, I had this selected. You know, if I selected this, I would have put it in here. But here's this one. And so now I can then, um, I can copy and paste this. I can delete this. I can say it's done by either clicking this and it'll throw it down there. So if I do it, it'll throw it down here in my done task. I can take it back out if I don't want to. Um, allows us to do those. There's different apps and, and things you can do there. So that you can create a bunch of these. Have them down here, and it's <clears throat> something common that you do all the time. You can create templates that way as well. Um, with that, so that's like a to-do list. That's what I call mine. Um, is it like a to-do list? What you can do from some of the other ones, if I go back and hit this home button, um, this was another one where it said problems, so problems to be addressed. So this can be modified into something different names that you're doing here. You can do the same thing here. You can go and create sticky notes, whatever you do. But notice now. Um, I have those that are related to a problem versus versus an action, okay? And then also I can go here. I'm only a team member, but I can assign a different team member to it when I create this, okay? And if you're done at the end of the day, if someone does it and you want to create a, drag a sticker onto it and say you're happy with it, you can do all that kind of stuff. Easy, easy to use, um, pretty pretty self you know self uh, learning on what you're doing here. Um, pretty pretty nice topic here. And also I can go here and I can add other things I can add notes I can add templates sketches I can add other things here as well um, I'm gonna go to here and then like I have a lot of discovery calls I keep my discovery calls in here and then I take my notes inside here um, let me zoom in here a little bit take my notes of my discovery calls and then I create notes I have common ones that I have in here that I do and then I Go ahead and, and make them make sure I send them a video of what I'm talking to them about. Uh, they have that, and if I need to email them anything that I that they need for anything else, and then I can have to do tasks right away inside this that I can do for my notes and invite other people if I want to. Okay, and then another example like a part design review you could use. You could bring in drawings, you could bring in pictures, you could then you know mark up. We can go here to. Um, sketch so we can go down here and i can make notes whatever i want to do that i have the highlighter right now here's the eraser oh, my, oh i didn't grab the eraser go back and erase this you know i can make different notes i want to do inside here this is actually a markup so i can go in here and make different notes uh, based on that um i can add a text box i can add more i can add an image if i want to all kinds of of course i have an undo and a redo um, so this allows us to collaborate where we can invite others as well, like we did. And we can also go here to tools. We can also add notes here as well. So if I wanted to add a sticky note, I can go ahead and do that. And I go here and then notice I added it here, but I can go ahead and double click on it and edit it. And I can, right now I have this, the pen still down here selected, down here, so that I can make up whatever. I, I'm not very good with the mouse, so this was a yeah, stylus, you could. You have a touch screen. Um, that's probably my best uh, doctor signature that you got right there. You know, um, so also it tells you who's who's created by, who is assigned to, um, what's the context. So I can add more content if I want to here. In the sketch here is I can do the same thing here. I can sketch up anything I want, notes, anything that I want to. I can type anything in here I want as well. Okay, just to, for more notes. And once something's done, you know I can go ahead and and. Once I get out of here, with the tools, I can go ahead and select the layer and pick this one. And then I can edit it again, or I can delete it, whatever I want to do from that. Okay. And then oh, we have a picture viewer, we have a player. So we can, the player is plays just about anything inside the platform. Um, any type of documents, videos, uh, part files that you want to open, those kind of things that are related. And picture viewer is that where you can view pictures and different things like that inside here so 3d lean allows me to collaborate um assign different items to other people um with that being said essentially what you, to create one you would want to 
essentially just go and you would create a 3D lean and I made this one a little bit bigger. So I'll just go ahead and create a new tab. And then I'm gonna rename this real quick, uh, new, new 3D lean. Okay, and then I go ahead and drag this on. Wherever you want, you can make this bigger, you can make it full size, okay. I can go ahead and pick the group I want, that if I already have a group created, I can create another team board. If I want to, call it whatever I want, and then go ahead and invite people and share it with people that way <clears throat> to do that. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Acme Rocket team. We're gonna grab that one. So this is what they start out as action logs. Um, again, you can go and customize and then you can come in here and do a sketch. There's already one in here, but you can drop and drag orders. Um, you can create a board if you want to, people can post things on there. Um, you can also do the different items that they have here. Notice these are already grayed out because they're already here. Um, but you could go ahead and put a team, create a team, team board if you wanted to, PDF viewer board, all that kind of stuff um, on here. And whatever you create, you don't have to create all of them, but if you just want one on here, you can. So I can go ahead and get rid of these and I just want to do an action log. Okay, and I want to I want to change the name of that. So what, for now, what I'll do is go ahead and close this. And then I can go ahead and edit this. And I can change the name of this if I want to. Okay, I can go to customize and I could say, to-do list, okay, something like that, all right? And then you can start creating notes in here if you want, actions, whatever you wanna do inside here, okay? So it allows us to do what I was saying there. Um, the, the, the biggest thing to get out of what this allows us to do, in my opinion, is it effectively, you know, when you have meetings and you, and you go to work together with people and you don't have stuff all over the place you know it's nice to keep it simple keep it in one location um you know people can put suggestions up there they can anything they want you know anything that they're assigned to do you're aware of it um you can track that you can go ahead and find out when it's done you know it'll be notify you when it's done um different things like that so it allows us to really apply um a team meeting or meetings in general or how we can you know be productive in any type of projects we're running because we're in one area and everyone's sharing everything okay so i think i don't know where i'm on time brian but i might there's a couple of things i want to kind of expand on that are in um if, if there's any questions first um or i want to expand on some of this other stuff that works well with 3D Lean. Yeah, no questions, Don. Uh, you still have a good five, 10 minutes easily. Okay. Okay, so what we can do inside um, inside here is we also have uh, ability to do like collaborative tasks. This is in the CSV role, um, which is the industry innovator. Um, this allows us to do, like I just did here, a to-do task, um, allows us to move things, drop and drag. We can go ahead, put a percentage on what we've done, um, on what we're doing, when it's due, those kind of things here. So these are ordered. Once these are ordered, I can drop and drag them to there. Um, these simple things, just as well as goes with this. And you can create tasks from 3D Lean. If you wanna make it a collaborative task, you can do that from 3D Lean. And then you go ahead and do that. So to put that in there, and just allows us to do, now actually manage it a little further with times, and then of course who we assign it to and those kind of things allows us to do that. So it's linked to that 3D lean as well. The other thing I wanna talk about is we can do what we call, there's another one that was called issue management, which is in CSV, which is very nice as well, where we can actually go in here and I manage different things that are inside here. Um, yeah, there it is. I didn't need to hit it again. Um, if we go here, so, Here's where we can, you know, different thing, um, issue management, where we can actually manage things that are or that are that are problems, like we have tool breaks. That's what I'm showing here. 
we can let someone know to go ahead and order tools. Um, this could be, you know, anything. Uh, we ran out of copy or paper. Um, th those type of things that we can do and everybody could be involved in that um, based on something like that you see there. Um, the other thing I wanted to show you is, you know, on the collaborative tasks, I do a lot of my projects that way. Um, if I'm working on it, when I'm done, I drag it over here. Um, those kind of things just keeps me to do list of what I have to do that day um, in, inside here. I do the same thing with, with the 3D lean as well. Um, so if I go back over here to, and I minimize this, um, and I go ahead and turn this to here. And I go back to the fashion group. And here's the stuff that I, you know, this is stuff that I can do notes. Again, this is back to 3D Lean, but we can go ahead and, and take advantage of all those items. Um, and the again, the ones I showed you with the collaborative, um, let me go back over here quick, with the collaborative business innovator, um, what you're allowed to do with that essentially is yeah you can you can define collaborate and manage you can do that with with the issue management you can also do that with the project planner um, for projects but then again that's on the CSV it doesn't have really thing that related to the 3d lean I just knew we had some extra time to talk about some other things today just some other things that I already use inside of uh, 3d experience um, related to management and, and things like that that we take advantage of of, of lean um, and, and, and lean is by a lot of people admitted where, you know, um, it would help them. You know, a lot of times their meetings are, are go long or they're not attended or, right. You can really use this to kick this out to everyone to know what they need to do. And, and kind of that way where even if they can't attend, they're still attended because you can still push it to them type scenario. Okay. That's all I really had right now, um, Brian. Is there any questions? No, but that's a good point, Don. I know just internally, you know, we've used the 3D Lean Board uh, a couple of times for projects that I've been a part of and, and meetings, reoccurring meetings, and and just having that uh, what's due today mm -hmm. or what are we working on tomorrow, um, just things like that. It really does force the, the group to stay on task, um, or at least be aware of it. This doesn't guarantee it's going to happen uh, in the same time that you want it to happen, but just having the exposure and the visual uh, visualization to see, you know, all these different tasks and who's assigned to it and uh, and such. So it is very visual uh, from that aspect. So uh, yeah, uh, no questions at this time, uh, no chat. So you must have done a very good job of explaining yeah. uh, the ins and outs of, of 3D Lean. Uh, same for you, Steve, with the uh, the presentation that you did earlier. So um, if anyone does have questions, as I mentioned, we just have two presentations for today. Um, any final words from, from either Steve or Don? I, none, none from for me. I appreciate everyone who attended, and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you picked up a, a tip or a trick that you can go back and and uh, apply to your, uh, you know, your daily usage of SolidWorks and and the platform. Yeah, and I think just a, sh a shameless plug for myself. If if you uh, have something that you've been using the platform uh, for, and would like to uh, to maybe give a future presentation, this is meant to be. Uh, customer driven you know we're obviously helping to host and, and coming up with some content but uh, we would love to have other customers and and clients be able to uh, present and show how they've used the platform in in, in any fashion uh, we've had a couple of presentations the past few months from customers using uh, the platform in a way that I didn't think they would be using it in so uh, we're all you know experiencing this at the same time so yeah if you do have an idea um, or, or would like to be a presenter, just just reach back to um, your account manager, uh, myself, um, any anyone here at CATI, we should be able to help. Uh, we did have one question just come through. Um, oh yeah, so th it was more of a question of the recording and uh, the recording I don't think is, is something you can download directly, but we will push that, Chris, to the uh, uh, our YouTube channel. It usually takes a few days for that to happen. Uh, but all of the past month's recordings are there on the CATI uh, YouTube channel. So 
uh, feel free to go there and uh, watch some of the past presentations, but uh, they will be up within the next the next few days. And, and Don, I didn't mean to cut you off if you had one last uh, comment you wanted to make. Nope, I'm good. Um, yeah, if you guys got any questions, let us know. But yeah, I think uh, I think I'm good. All right, well, um, I'll give you uh, a few minutes back. Uh, looks like uh, we did get a couple of thanks co comments that came through. So uh, good job, guys, and uh, look forward to seeing everyone at our August meeting. That will be on August 17th. We'll have a notification about that coming up here in a few weeks, and we already have presentations lined up. So uh, we, uh, we should be good, good to go for August 17th. So again, thanks, everyone, and enjoy the rest of your day.